Well, hey guys, welcome back to the Friday Q&A. I hope you guys are having a good summer. Today I am going to um, talk about a topic that I get many questions about and that is kind of controversial a little bit as far as sun protection and that is sunscreen pills. Do they work? Do supplements that claim to act as sunscreens work? What can they do and what can't they do? So today I'm going to answer all of your questions about sunscreen pills. Here I have HelioCare, which is one common one. <clears throat> there are many, many others. These are dietary supplements. If you're new here, welcome. My name is Andrea. I am a dermatologist and my YouTube channel is largely fun vlogs of my life, but a lot of skincare focused content. So if that type of thing is of interest to you, then please subscribe and stick around. Um, but anyways, getting into it, what exactly are these supplements? Well, the active ingredient in sunscreen supplements or supplements sold um, to quote, protect you against a burn, contain <clears throat> polypodium leucomotus extract as their active selling ingredient. Polypodium leucomotus extract is, comes from a fern that is native to South and Central America. And it's actually been used in a lot of <clears throat> indigenous populations for many, many years for a variety of ailments. And we have a large amount of evidence, both in laboratory studies as well as in people, that polypodium leucomotus extract, PLE, um, is a very potent antioxidant that can help to lessen and protect against some of the damaging effects of ultraviolet radiation that comes from the sun on our skin. First of all, when you expose your skin to a natural sunlight, um, ultraviolet radiation from the sun generates free oxygen radicals in the skin. These high energy molecules have acutely damaging effects on the cells of our skin and predisposed to cancer and are associated with skin cancer formation. And polypodium leucomotus extract, which is a potent antioxidant, has been demonstrated and is known to scavenge many of these free radicals, protecting skin cells against this uh, damaging outcome. Secondly, the other thing that occurs when you um, expose your skin to natural sunlight, ultraviolet radiation wipes out a cell type called the Langerhorn cell. The Langerhorn cell is kind of like the security guard of your skin in that uh, the Langerhorn cell sort of surveys um, within the skin uh, for, for um, you know, unwanted unwanted uh, unwanted intruders, if you will, antigens. And when it finds them, it takes them to jail, so to speak, or it, it takes them to your immune system and shows it to, to the immune system, and uh, your immune system takes care of it. Um, but ultraviolet radiation um, acutely wipes out that population of cells, and so your skin is, is basically at risk during that period for, for unwanted invaders like bacterial infections, um, and a variety of other antigens. Um, but polypodium leucomotus extract has been shown to actually inhibit the depletion of the population of, uh, inhibit depletion of Langerhorn cells upon exposure to ultraviolet radiation. Another consequence of exposing your, your skin to natural sunlight is that ultraviolet radiation is so damaging to the skin cells that they kind of do your overall skin, so they, they attempt to do your skin somewhat of a favor and they commit suicide. Um, this is called apoptosis um, and those cells are referred to as sunburn cells. They have a very distinct appearance. Um, um, on skin biopsy. And polypodium leucomotus extract has been shown to decrease the number of sunburn cells that form. The other thing that happens when you expose your skin to natural sunlight is that uh, it damages the DNA in the skin cells and generates something called cyclobutane pyrimidine dimers or CPD dimers. And these dimers um, basically create mutations in our DNA. And polypodium leucomotus extract has been shown to uh, result in fewer of these forming upon exposure to ultraviolet radiation. And then the last thing that I will point out that has been shown um, to be helpful uh, with polypodium leucomotus extract is that when you expose your, sun, your skin to natural sunlight, a population of cells can come into the skin called the mast cells. 
Um, and these cells release histamine. Um, this results in increased redness in the skin, itching, and inflammation. And polypodium leucomotus extract has um, been shown to decrease, to, to be associated with fewer numbers of mast cells and overall less redness, inflammation, and improvement in itch. So all this sounds pretty promising, right? So, so what, is, what is polypodium leucomotus extract or heliocare or sunscreen pills? What exactly are they good for? They are, in my opinion, and in the opinion of, of many dermatologists, kind of just like, like a little, little addition to, to sun protection, but very important for you to understand, they are by no means, absolutely by no means, a substitute for sunscreen. They do not act as sunscreens. They do not protect your skin fully from uh, the damaging effects of ultraviolet radiation. They do not, they are not, simply put, they are not a substitute for sun protection. Sunscreen use, wearing a broad brimmed hat, um, and avoiding key uh, hours of sun exposure. They are not a license to go out and be in the sun all day without sun protection. And therefore, they're, you know, my, my problem with these supplements is that they, they claim to act as sunscreen pills and they offer very, very misleading, misleading information to consumers that worries me. And uh, it, it's quite problematic. So much so the FDA actually issued a warning to consumers against these pills. And you know, unfortunately when the FDA has to do this, the media gets a hold of these kind of, of warnings and creates these sensational type headlines that can just generate even more misleading information. You know, FDA warns against, sounds like, like, like this is potentially deadly. Um, but <laughs> really what's important for you to understand is that the messages on a lot of these sunscreen sunscreen pills are inaccurate. They are not a sunscreen pill. They are not a substitute for, for sunscreen and sun protection. They merely can help to lessen some of the consequences of sun exposure. Um, and they, they're an adjuvant to sun protective behaviors. They are not a substitute. They have not been demonstrated to, to protect against a sunburn uh, in the absence of, of, of sun protective behaviors. They do not work that way. They cannot work that way. And it's very important for you as a consumer to appreciate that. But we do have very good evidence that polypodium leucomotus extract actually can be helpful when paired with, with, with good sun protective behaviors. And it can help uh, certain populations of people in particular who are very, very sensitive to, to sun, to, who are very photosensitive. Um, so, you know, I, while I have a huge problem with these pills and their marketing and their, their claims, polypodium leucomotus extract actually is a very, very promising uh, ingredient and has been shown in some small studies in dermatology, some small controlled studies to be helpful for people uh, with photosensitive skin diseases like polymorphous light uh, who are really, really sensitive to, to sunlight exposure. And they do all of the behaviors. They do the sun protection, they do the hats, they do everything. And even, even the slightest bit of, of sun can really, really kick, kick off a flare for them. And there are some small studies, um, not enough yet to, to fully recommend this, but there are some small studies that are very well controlled that show that polypodium leucomotus can be helpful in these populations of people. And you know, for the everyday consumer who's really doing a good job and following the, the behaviors of reapplying sunscreen every two hours while you're outdoors, they're wearing long sleeves, a broad brim hat, they're not going out and baking in the sun, you know, I think it's reasonable to consider taking taking this. Um, I think it's a, a reasonable thing to think about, just as kind of a little bit of an extra an, an extra measure for protecting the health of your skin. And you know, the population of people that I was also very optimistic about HelioCare at one point, um, but the studies haven't really panned out to support that, are those uh, individuals with melasma and um, diseases of hyperpigmentation. Um, you guys have heard many of my talks about melasma and how important sunscreen is in uh, improving melasma and how important avoiding sun and sun exposure is. Um, there's actually a, a small study looking at um, people with melasma who uh, use sunscreen 
um, in, in one group, and then the other group used sunscreen plus, plus HelioCare. They took it three times a day, which is kind of a lot. They took it three times a day, and there was absolutely no difference in, th their melasma improved. Both groups had improvement in their melasma, but there was no difference between the two groups. So this, this didn't seem to add anything as far as improving m melasma. Uh, but, you know, most of the studies that I've seen are with 240 milligrams twice a day, and um, so I'm not exactly sure why HelioCare tell tells you to take it once a day. But how long does it last? As far as helping to lessen redness and irritation, um, it lasts about two hours. So, you know, if you take this in the morning and then you uh, go out, so you take this at like at 7 or 7 a.m. and then you go out in the sun at 2 p.m. Um, it, it may it may not offer you as much bang for your buck. In addition to taking it orally, you can um, you know there it can be applied topically uh, to theoretically scavenge free radicals and function as an antioxidant just by putting it on the skin without having to ingest it. I haven't seen any compelling studies with the topical forms like I have with the oral, with oral polypodium to make me super confident in that. As you know, and as I've mentioned on here before, antioxidants in skincare products are incredibly unstable and their free radical scavenging ability tends to, tends to not be preserved when the individual winds up putting it on their face. You know, the free radical scavenging ability and the antioxidant capacity of the of the antioxidant really is just not stable enough in topical forms. So I'm really suspicious of helio of um, I'm really suspicious of polypodium leucomotus extract applied topically that it's necessarily the most efficacious, but I could be wrong, you know, you know, maybe more studies will come out down the road. Um, all of the studies that we have on polypodium leucomotus extract, this is important for you to, to understand, have been done, have been performed in, in individuals who are 18 years of older and always exclude women who are pregnant or breastfeeding. So at this time, we don't have uh, data to support use of polypodium leucomotus extract in populations younger than 18 or women who are pregnant or breastfeeding. So those, those groups were always, have always been excluded <laughs> from all of the studies. So, um, you know, I can't comment on the safety of it in those groups. It actually appears to be pretty safe. Uh, we have about 20 years of, of data in Europe, people using this, and really seems to be very safe with no adverse side effects. Uh, people who take it at high, high doses can get a little upset stomach. That stops once they, they stop taking it, uh, but it, it tends to be very well tolerated. And then lastly, the point that I will make is that these are supplements. These are dietary supplements. And one of the things you as a consumer should be aware of is that dietary supplements are not regulated in the same manner as over-the-counter drugs or prescription drugs. They're not monitored for safety or efficacy, and so you're a bit at the mercy of the manufacturer. And a lot of manufacturers may put other ingredients in that, you know, are not as well studied or we're not as confident in. They may pump it with a bunch of other antioxidants in an effort to sell you a more expensive pill, whether or not that is giving you more more bang for your buck is hard to say. So in summary, polypodium leucomotus extract, very, very promising and a good, good amount of data to, to support its use as an addition to sun protection in lessening the adverse outcomes of ultraviolet radiation from natural sun exposure. Um, key, key point, it is not a substitute for sun protection. It is not a substitute for sunscreen. It is not a sunscreen pill. It is merely, merely kind of an adjuvant to sun protection. It appears to be safe. We don't have data to support its safety or efficacy in pregnant women, breastfeeding women, or individuals under the age of 18. Um, but otherwise, it appears to be very safe <laughs> thus far. It is a supplement, not a drug, so it is not regulated and monitored in the same way. So yeah, that's about all in terms of polypodium leucomotus extract. 
Um, I don't think it is bad, but I know it is not a substitute for sun protection. I hope my video is helpful and kind of clarifying that for you all. And, uh, you know, be smart consumers. <laughs> be smart consumers. That is what I hope my videos help to empower you to make, make smarter decisions and not fall for marketing claims. And when it comes to supplements, you really are at the mercy of a lot of, of, of marketing and gimmicky claims. And uh, so hopefully this video was helpful in, in, in helping you navigate some of the nonsense out there. But if you liked it, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and as always, don't forget, sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow.